Hello there, it's Marco Schwartz here. And in this video, I will show you how to control a relay from anywhere in the world using the ESP8266 chip. We will first assemble the project, then I will show you how to control this relay from anywhere using my own ARST framework that I developed for you to build Internet of Things, Home Automation and many more projects. Of course, this project has a very strong home automation influence because you can control, for example, a lamp, or any other device in your home with this relay. But of course, you can also use this for many other fields like built-in robots or drones or other applications. Now, we will go right into the project. We will see how to assemble the different components. Now we are going to see what you actually need to build the project. The first thing you will need is, of course, the ESP8266 board, which is just here. I'm using an Adafruit board, which is quite handy for this project because it's very tiny. You can see it on the breadboard. You still have a lot of space around it. And as we will see, it's very easy to program as well. So I really love this board. The second thing you will need, as the video is titled, how to control a relay from anywhere is, of course, a relay, which is just here. So I'm using very small 5 volt relay. You can basically use whatever you want. I like this board. It's from Pololu, I think, of course, everything will be linked in the article. But this board is really nice because it's very small. It's very easy also to connect to the ESP board here. And you can basically, I think, plug devices of more than 1000 watts to this little relay. So this is pretty nice to control any kind of things like lamps and similar devices. And of course, you will need the usual 5 volt FTDI board that we will use to program the ESP board. So we are now going to see how to assemble the different parts of the project. As we will only have one relay here to control, this will be really simple. The first step is just to take the relay put it next to your board and we are first going to connect the power supply here. So just take the red power cable and connect it to the 3 volt pin of the board. So I know that I say that it's a 5 volt relay, but don't worry, it will work just as well with a 3.3 volt output. For the ground, just connect it to the ground pin, which is just here on the board. And finally, I have this signal pin here. So I chose to connect it to pin number five on the board, but you can basically connect it to any available output. You will just need to modify a bit the rest of this tutorial. So now I will connect that to pin number five. Here you have the assembled project. The only thing you still need is this FTDI board here, which I will connect right on the ESP chip. And of course, you have the micro USB um, port here that I will use later to program the ESP. Okay, so now that our hardware is assembled, I will show you how to configure the board so it can be controlled from anywhere in the world from a nice cloud dashboard. First, we are going to see the, the code. The code, of course, is also on the GitHub repository of this project, and you will find the link inside the article on the blog. So the link and everything you need to know is just below the video. So the code, I won't spend too much time on it because the article with many, many details. So basically what we are using is this ARS framework. Um, so you basically create an instance of that. You give an idea to the device. We'll come back to that later. And basically you just need to call this loop function and the device will be constantly connected to the cloud, so to the irs.io server that will take care of everything for you. There are two things that you actually need to modify in this sketch so it works. The first thing you need to modify is the device ID. So the device ID is this here and you need to put your own ID so just some random sequence of numbers and uh, characters. So really you have your own device on network and nobody else can access it. So I will use this here. So don't use this one because probably a lot of people will, will do it anyway. And the second thing you have to modify is the Wi-Fi parameters. So you have to modify the Wi-Fi SSID and passwords so the chip can connect to your own network. So before I upload the code, I will put my own. Um, credentials here so don't worry it's not one of my personal passwords so it actually doesn't matter so much 
Uh, so that's done. So now I want you to be sure that you selected the right uh, board and also the right USB port. And also that your ESP device is in programming mode or in bootloader mode. So as you can see, mine is already in this mode. So make sure yours is um, also in bootloader mode before doing that. Otherwise it will not work. So now just press upload. And the Arduino ID will compile the sketch and then upload it to the board. So now compiling is finished, it will upload the sketch to the board. As you can see on the board, the blue LED is blinking, meaning that code is actually being uploaded to the board. So now it's done and before we move to the next section of this uh, video, I will show you how you can actually check that it's actually working, just from now. So just doing the sale monitor and which should appear here and just uh, actually reset the board so it started in and you can see all the messages coming. So I will now reset the board. And as you can see, the Wi-Fi has been connected and the MQTT connection to iOS.io is done. So now this board and the relay is accessible from anywhere in the world. And we should, of course, just go to web browser and control the board directly. But what we are going to do is simply to close this and go to this website, which propose a nice user interface for the RS devices. You can just do a dashboard.rs.io, it's all free. And if you have a new account, it will look like this. So just create a new account and then a new dashboard. I will just draw it ESP, add a new dashboard. Then you can click on it. And now as you can see, there is nothing here. So I will go in edit mode and type a name of our element here. So we'll just call it relay. Device idea, that's what you configured before. So I will go back here and just copy this, paste it here. So now what do we want actually? We want to control digital pin five, which is the pin on which the relay is connected. So digital, I will set here, number five. And I just want an on off uh, button. So this will create basically two buttons and I will create this element here. And as you can see, some stuff already happened, so I will hide this. So now we have our element called relay, we have two nice buttons, and actually the, the server already detected that it's on a low state at the moment, so the relay is not on. That's the name of our device, which we can also set in the code, and it's online. And now to illustrate the behavior of this, I will simply use the buttons, and as you can see, I click on this button on, the relay automatically turns on immediately and off. And you can see that the status is also automatically updated to reflect the status of the relay. So again, on and off. Remember that this is done locally in my lab now. <laughs> But this can really be done from anywhere in the world, right? Because I'm, here I'm just accessing everything from the local Wi-Fi network. But actually, the device is communicating with the ARS.io server, which I think, I don't even know where it is in the world, probably in the US. And then the dashboard and the device are communicating via this central ARS.io server, which really allows you to control this device from any web browser it can be from a computer, it can be from your mobile phone, so really from any network on the planet. Just to finish, again I will try the behavior of this on and off again. So this is already the end of this video, I hope that you enjoyed it. So as I said in the beginning of this video, you can apply this to many fields. You can of course use it for home automation and the Internet of Things to control a device uh, from anywhere via this relay and this dashboard. But what you can also do is apply it to many other fields. I know people who apply this to control mobile robots from anywhere. I know people who actually use this for their business, so for affordable agriculture and affordable monitoring animals in a farm. So many, many applications with this framework. So I really invite you to check out the link below the video so you will get to the article of this project on the blog. 
I also invite you to check out the website of the ARES framework, which is just at ARES.io. You will also find the link below. And if you want to find more videos in the future, just subscribe to this channel. And that's it. Thanks again for watching. Leave comments below if you have some. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.